In this video, I'm going to be talking about the first of the ways that astronomers use to find the distances between objects in our solar system, our galaxy, and eventually our universe. Knowing the distance between objects gives us an idea of how large the universe actually is. If we know how far away the objects in the universe are, we can then look at how old the universe is. So that's the ultimate goal. We're going to start by looking at some of the typical distances inside our solar system. And so here we have all of the parts of our solar system apart from the Earth, obviously. And you can see here, this is the distance from the Sun is given here, and this is in kilometers. And so you can very quickly start to see that we get to thousands of millions of kilometers. And this is very inconvenient, using large numbers like this. So instead, we use, start to use something called the astronomical unit. The astronomical unit is only really useful for within our solar system. It's given the abbreviation AU, and that is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. The average distance from the Earth to the Sun is 150 million kilometers, and so that is equal to 1 AU. So I'm going to be using AU as a unit of distance from now through to the end of this video. This video is entitled Trigonometric Parallax, but first you have to know what parallax is, and you'll have met this before in terms of parallax errors. But just to demonstrate it to yourself, the easiest way to do that is to take your finger and with your right eye closed, so only looking through your left eye, line your finger up with a vertical object in the background. So you can see here, this finger is lined up with the side of this door jam. Now switch eyes. And when you look at your finger through your right eye, you will see that your finger appears to have moved relative to the door jam. And this is the principle of parallax. Because you look at something at an angle, its position relative to a background, an unmoving background, will appear to move depending on the angle that you look at it. And this is the whole principle of trigonometric parallax, very neatly summarized in this diagram. So if this is the same as your right eye, here, the observations in February, and this is the same as your left eye, the observations in August. And what you're doing is you're looking at a star, and here the example is given of the Pleiades group of stars, against the background. So the very, very far away stars that do not appear to move. So it's very important that we have an unmoving background here, and that's our stars. And when you look at the Pleiades in February, you see them against these background stars. And when you look again in August, when the Earth is on the other side of the Sun, you see them against these ones. And so the idea is, is that you can measure the angle through which the Pleiades appear to have moved relative to the background between February and August. And so this is the angle that I've just referenced that you're measuring. And what you do then is you construct this triangle. You know the distance that the Earth, these black dots here that I've just circled in green, those represent the Earth, and obviously that's the Sun at the center. You know that the distance between the Sun and the Earth is 1 AU. And the angle that it has moved through is the same on either side. You divide that angle into two. The division of that angle into two, the resulting half angle, is called our parallax angle. And now we've got a right angle triangle. We know the parallax angle. Again, it's the angle that the stars appear to have moved, divided by two. We know the side opposite that angle, and so we can say then that tan p is equal to 1 AU over the distance from the Sun to our star. And that means, of course, that the distance to the star is equal to 1 AU over tan p. This here represents the Pleiades that we saw in the previous diagram. Obviously, the closer that object gets, if you imagine, then the bigger our parallax angle is going to be. So we get a much bigger parallax angle, a much bigger apparent shift of the star relative to the background, the closer the object is. 
Now, when we talk about much bigger angles, none of the angles that I'm referring to here are very large, so we need to know how angles are divided up into smaller amounts. So we obviously know that we measure angle in degrees. You need to realize that one angle is divided up into 60 what are called minutes of arc. So just like there are 60 minutes in an hour, there are 60 minutes of arc, or smaller portions of angle, in one degree. And then itself, one minute, is divided up into 60 seconds of arc. So one second of arc is equal to 1 over 3,600 of a degree. I mention this because the angles that we are dealing with are extremely small. So for example, Alpha Centauri, the, in the closest star system to us, that has a parallax angle of 0 0.75 seconds of arc. So the total movement that it makes against the background is only 1.5 degrees, and that is the closest, so that means that is the biggest angle that astronomers measure stars to make against the background. Any other star system is going to have a smaller angle than this, and this is why it's so important for you to realize about minutes of arc and seconds of arc. If that's the biggest angle that's measured. The smallest measurable angle is about 2.8 times 10 to the minus 6 degrees. So that is the smallest parallax angle that uh, current telescopes can measure. And if we do a little calculation using our equation that we came up with before, we know that distance is 1 AU over the tan of our parallax angle. And if our smallest parallax angle is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 6, that gives us 150 times 10 to the 6 kilometers, so 10 to the 9 meters, divided by the tan of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 6, giving us a maximum distance of 3.07 times 10 to the 18 meters. So that is the farthest away star that can be measured using this idea of trigonometric parallax. At the very start, I said we're not going to use meters and kilometers much in astrophysics here. Let's turn this into AU, and that is 2 times 10 to the 7 AU. So you can see that once you get outside the solar system, the AU itself becomes obsolete because you just end up with very, very large numbers of AU. So clearly, we need another unit. And we use trigonometric parallax to define that unit. So if you have a parallax angle of one second of arc, then the distance away that a star is that produces a parallax angle of one second, that is 1 over 3,600 of a degree, the distance that star is away is called a parsec, or PC for short. And again, let's determine exactly how much a parsec is. We can use the equation we had before. We know that d is 1 AU over the tan of 1 second, which is 1 over 3,600 of a degree. Again, if we put it into meters, remember 1 AU is 150 million kilometers, and therefore 150 times 10 to the 9 meters over the tan of, if you do that calculation, 2.78 times 10 to the minus 4, giving us a value of 3.09 times 10 to the 16 meters. So that is what one parsec is. Remember, one parsec is the distance to an object that causes a parallax angle of one second of arc. These are not conversions that you need to remember. If they want you to use a parsec and then you need to convert it into meters, they will tell you what the conversion is. There is one thing to be said about this calculation for distance using trigonometric parallax. Sometimes you see this tan gone, so it's just 1 AU over P. That's because we're dealing with very, very small angles here, and the small angle approximation can be used. And the small angle approximation says that tan P is approximately equal to P. But I prefer to keep it in there, it gives you a more accurate answer, and it doesn't take that much more time. The other astronomical unit that you see used quite a lot is light years, although that's not really a unit that astronomers use very much. 
It is something that is used in the media quite a lot. It is the distance that light travels in a year. And it is something that you need to know as well. You can do a quick calculation using the speed of light to figure out what distance speed times time, convert time into years, and you'll figure out what distance a light year is. But you can see that it is less than one parsec. The parsec is a bigger unit. And here are some typical close by stars. Alpha Centauri, we said, had a parallax angle of 0.75 seconds of arc, giving it a par uh, distance in parsec of 1.33. And as you go through them, the Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, 0.377 seconds of arc. We get much smaller as we get further away down to Aldebaran, which is 0 0.054. Now, we said that the smallest useful parallax angle was 2.8 times 10 to the minus 6, giving us a distance of 3.06 times 10 to the 18 meters. That is about 100 parsec. So using trigonometric parallax becomes useless as soon as objects are more than 100 parsec away. And what you've got to remember is that the diameter of our galaxy is 16,000 parsec. So trigonometric parallax is only useful for measuring the distances to stars within a very local section of our galaxy. At A level, they usually just say within our galaxy, but be aware, actually, it's only for our local neighbors. So clearly, we need some other methods of finding the distances to stars that are further away than 100 parsec and we know also that, of course, there are other galaxies, so how do we find the distances to those? And that will be covered in the coming videos.